say welcome everyone. And yeah, as Selena was saying, I, 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 I thought that maybe a good idea to make this uh, fun and to make this um, significant in some way was to pretend from the very beginning we know each other and that we are already a fiat company. So in that sense, we are already making a performance. So there is already a, an artistical creation in all of this. Never mind we, what we achieve. So that's something I like from the beginning. And uh, in that sense, I would just like to, uh, yeah, to pretend you are my company. We are having an online uh, work session. And I will explain um, a project, like a new project we will like be working in because we can, we, we have the right to create the whole world right now in this hour and we can pretend we are going to work in this project for a lot of time together and it's going to be great. And as you are part of my company and you know me very well and there is a, a long uh, time relationship, be, relationship between us, you can uh, cut me at every moment or comment uh, anything or get your doubts on the thoughts we are like uh, exposing or trying to I don't know just uh, act as if uh, you were in your company and you were allowed to give uh, every idea every comment every um, every thought you come by so yeah more or less do you think it, it can work <laughs> somehow? How do you feel about that? 100%. Super. <laughs> so, in that um, sense, I, I, um, I'm interested lately in how to make the processes go I was thinking about the processes that uh, in Western countries are uh, set to help decolon decolonizing thoughts to go to go further, and I I began to put in doubt the mechanisms we we used to we used to play with, cause like. Uh, artists are getting some public funding or some private funding in Spain here it's like more likely some public funding to get to get some of your projects and then those fundings are spent on uh, projects done in the very same countries in which the, 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 the money is, um, is given so I was thinking how can we and then in that cases there are like lot of workshops uh, for like to make uh, migrants or new people arriving to our country like uh, understand our theater processes and I was wondering how much this uh, these processes these workshops we are doing even if super well intention are also a way of uh, keeping the cultural colonization on the people that are arriving. I, I'm, and also in that sense, I was thinking like how to take that money outside my, my, the borders of my country. You know, like how can I take the, how can we, in this new project, take the money we get in some funding out of our uh, borders and make it useful for the people. <clears throat> and in that sense, I began to thought that maybe it could be a good idea if we pretend we do uh, the research process as we are traveling abroad in a non-European or uh, uh, North American country. And we, get, we are taking that money we get for the funding uh, to those countries and we are trying to spend that in a responsible way. We like to spend that on local uh, small enterprises, local small shops or whatever, local small hotels. Could it be a good change? Could it be something that improves, you know, what we do with the money that, in, that makes the process already um, change things, that, it, that makes the process already a little bit farther from our 
I don't know, artists' uh, feelings and personal uh, thoughts about the world, which I think are not that interesting. And once we go there, if we achieve to, I mean, if we think it, it can work, what kind of artistical product can we do with that afterwards? You know, because I don't know how you, how you see that till the, you know, yes, like in the moment, if we take like taking the money from a big public institution in Spain and taking it, let's say to Lebanon, to Morocco, to Mauritania, Senegal, uh, uh, I think it works better for achieving, um, for making culture really a, a, a fight against uh, hunger. Because I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with Antonin Artaud from the beginning of my work. And there's something he says in his theater as a double that I really, that really came to my mind lots of times. And it's really, he says that, uh, what's the point on saving a culture a Western culture, he's saying that has never achieved saving human being from something as simple as hunger. And I think there is a big, big truth there, but not truth because maybe truth doesn't exist anymore after postmodernism. But there's a <coughs> there's like a, a clue or a key for I I I go back to lots of times, and I think it it makes sense, you know, like. Um, and then I think that getting the money out of Spain and giving it to a person that is selling some bananas in Morocco, it's really making something against this hunger that Arto says that Western culture is doing nothing against. And then I began to thought, okay, that's fine, but can the world be like a research space for the for the creator, is it uh, possible some way? Is it possible that we do some research if we are traveling, or are we just again doing some tourism, which is again a Western colonization cultural form? And um, then I was thinking that there is also a, another philosophical cue that can help us in that, uh, in that point, because some of the very basis of the performance theory uh, can be under, there, there are a lot of forms of definition for performance. There are a lot of uh, studies already on that, but a simple way of defining that is being against Aristotle's theory, theatrical theory, which means that theater should imitate reality because it, uh, it's implicit on that that reality is something more real than a performance. And if there is something, the world is something more real than a performance and a performance should imitate the world, even if the performance is criticizing the world, the performance is uh, working for the prevalence of this world because it's talking about this world so it's uh given the world as a fact that cannot be changed and if we think that watching a performance is the same that watching the world around us in an active position we are breaking this aristotle rule because the world and the stage are at the same level of importance for us. And that's a way of resisting reality. And there's a way of resisting like the, the reality in all the, in all the violent ways it uh, make us suffer. You know, in all the binary ways, reality make us suffer. Uh, never mind if it's with gender or if with uh, sex or race or uh, sexual orientation. It's the, the establishment of that reality is what makes us suffer. And then I thought that if we change that and we uh, can 
really make a performance, make a, the, the, the experience of a person watching a performance and the experience of a person traveling the world come closer, we can make this barrier between world and stage disappear somehow. And I can, it can be also another way of resisting the binary reality. So in that sense, till that moment, I was thinking more or less we are okay in, in our goals of trying to achieve a cultural action that fights hunger more than other critical cultural actions. Because one, we take the money out of a big country and we get the money to people uh, with small, like small, not big firms in, a, in another country. And then second one, we can make the experience of a person who's watching a performance and a person who is traveling the world come closer. So I don't know how do you see that, my team, till the moment. But for me till the moment, as I'm trying to build the structure, I, I see that more or less it is, uh, it's working. But then, if, if you say nothing, I, I go on. If you, can, if you want to stop me or whatever, you can uh, at any moment or comment, whatever. And then, if uh, in this point, let's imagine we try to do that. Let's imagine we go on a travel. We had money. So, Manolo, uh, we, are, we are imagining that we got a fund. Yeah. We are here to company. And okay. then we decide that we are going to go and travel, right? Yes. Till Where the moment, are we going? I think we're going to Middle East because <laughs> it's the place that we really went last year and it makes me things easier to do the, to the point. And it's quite an interesting place to think about colonialism as well. I think it's quite a very uh, interesting place <laughs> to, to think about colonialism. And yeah. So, to this point, if no one is against, we have got some public funding. We have, we have agreed that it's a good idea to go with this public funding to the Middle East and to spend that public funding in uh, small places of people there. And we thought we have an artistic uh, goal in getting the experience of the person who's attending a performance and the person who's traveling the world with a critical view, both cases, make it closer. So we, we, we think we are more or less in our way. We are like, I don't know, happy artists thinking everything goes <laughs> fine. Till the moment we find the problems in the, in the journey. So then we began the journey. And let's say, for example, we meet a theater company in Beirut, okay, in Lebanon. Just to, <clears throat> I don't know, to put things a little bit on the, on the side. We are in Lebanon, and as we have traveled through Turkey and stuff, we've been talking about Lebanon history, so we are a little bit aware of where, where we are and stuff. And just to put, like, um, summing up a little bit things, Lebanon was part of the Ottoman Empire till the First World War. Till then, French and British divided the remains of the British Empire and French kept Lebanon and Syria under control. So French people had had relationship with people in Lebanon since the Crusades time, which was maybe the first um, attack on another culture just because they were another culture massive attack on another culture from the Western uh, uh, places. And the French have relationship with the, and they have economical interests on there with the Christians because Lebanon has a lot of mountains, all the minorities that has, had been prosecuted during history <coughs> had ended there. So that's an important point on Lebanon as well. Christians are prosecuted during the Byzantine Empire and they, hide themselves on the mountains in Lebanon. Then when Islam came, uh, Shi Shia people get prosecuted by Sunni people and they go to hide themselves there. They have 
lots of minorities, Armenian, Rus people. So there's a mix of minorities. And when the Ottoman Empire falls down, the French kept Lebanon and make a country for their Christian allies there. And they set the country with some ports to give them access to the sea and some um, places to grow vegetables. And they uh, make a country, putting a lot of different communities inside and which is more important, obligating them to make, to have the idea of a nation, which is the first, I think the first mistake that takes them to war afterwards. The idea that Western countries pushed rest of the world to make borders and to keep our idea of a nation in this and our idea of identity. They make people there believe they should have an identity and they should have an own country and they should uh, feel themselves different from the other communities in order to get modern, in order to get to the 20th century, in order to get uh, <clears throat> industrialized and in order to get somehow rich. So uh that's more or less the situation and then lebanon gets a system in which different communities <clears throat> have different uh, parts of power so the president will be always a christian the prime minister will always be a sunni and that's the way so there's a <clears throat> there's a fight between the real estate the country and the confessional states in which every community uh keeps their people takes care of their people in terms of social care as well, as the state is not uh, giving any social assistance to the people, every community and the political party representing every community is giving social assistance to the people. So there's the fight between a state, a real state, a normal one as we know it, and then a confessional state in which every community has the power. Some kind of even feudal state in which every leader, every big family controls the territory and controls the people. So there in Beirut, we met a theater company and we are going to meet them. And we really got amazed with the work these people are doing. I mean, the, 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 the first thing we do as a company when we arrive there is to, <clears throat> to feel how easy, is, how easy our circumstances are even if we think they are very difficult in comparison with the circumstances they have in Lebanon, in Beirut. These people in this theater tell us that they are working with, um, Lebanon has 4 million Lebanese people living, 2 million Syrian refugees and 1 million Palestinian refugees, which makes 4 million Lebanese people and 3 million refugees. Most of these refugees have no Lebanese citizenship and they have no access to any uh, medical care or schools. Just yes, the access like the UNRWA, like the UN organization is given to them. But it's the same UN that doesn't allow them to go back to the places and in Palestine and stuff. So that's a, a bit tricky. And also the Lebanese government doesn't want to put them inside the population because it will change the balance between Christian and Muslim population and it will change the balance of power. So there is no one taking care of these people. And this theater company is. They, they, they are taking care of these people. And they are taking care of these people with French money. That's a very important part of the equation. Because as the state is not working, there is no funding for culture. These people who are great, and they have projects with the refugees, and they have projects with Ethiopian women that are working in the houses as like intern uh, service in the houses and they're almost like working in 
semi-slavery situation and the only one in the whole country that is dealing with these women are these three at the company. You know, like very critical stuff, very, very to the point, I know, and with French money, which is as well a way of keeping the French cultural colonialism on Beirut, on the whole Lebanon. But it's a way of keeping them uh, active and make them have some projects for the refugees. So that's the first contradiction. I don't know how do you see that. Like, is there a way of, they ask us, do we think there's a way of going beyond that contradiction? Do we have to accept that it's contradictory and they have to take French money? And even though knowing that's collaborating or keeping French cultural colonialism over Lebanon, they get to help more urgent situations, like the refugees one. Can we, we really say this necessity is more urgent than this other necessity? in that case and beyond that when they are dealing the the workshops to the to the refugees and to the ethiopian women they are using western uh theater techniques like in the hope that learning to uh deliver your voice project your voice or moving yourself or having a presence on a stage can make a difference on the way you on the way you perceive your situation and on the discrimination situation those people are living so that's the first question we we arrive the first contradiction point, like, can we help them if they ask, if they ask us? I, I think it's very on the point what you say, Jay, like it's, it's another way, contradiction has always lots of ways of being expressed. Like it's the same contradiction, the same like pull the sack, I don't know, the same street without an, without an, an, an out, an exit is a, it's a place we cannot go on thinking of what, but also what is interesting is that we cannot give up thinking. You know, that's another point. That's the, when, once we reach this, uh, this point in which contradictions stop us, like, uh, uh, is it even fair to stop thinking? Can we stop thinking, you know, like, uh, what do we need to, to go on? I will, I will get another example which makes, which came to us in the, in the same Beirut, which make us thought a, a lot. We were like um, staying in a house as we, we got by through Airbnb of uh, some people there. We, we thought it was nice people. And in fact, they were, they were with us afterwards and they were very nice people. And uh, <clears throat> she was a lesbian in the house. And we began to talk with them about the, the LGTBAQ, uh, collective uh, situation there. And then it really was another uh, like slap in our face, you know, like again with the, in the end, we, fought, we, we fought, found ourselves in the very same contradiction again. Like we were at the same point, we we're trying to, to make our best in our decolonizing critic, our, our, ourselves above ourselves. And we were like, uh, explaining that maybe the, of course, the methods we have uh, uh, developed in the Western countries to improve the situation of LGTBIQ community, um, maybe have improved situ situ situation for, the, for these people. I mean, they're, they're, they're not perfect, of course, but they have improved the situation, but maybe they were the solutions for our problems of exclusion, but 
they cannot be the solutions for the problems of exclusion the people uh, have in Beirut. And we were also dealing with the idea that it's clear for Europeans when traveling abroad outside Europe that the human network between people is much more tight. Like something happens in the street to you and everyone comes to help you in Africa, in Middle East. That is something that doesn't happen in Europe anymore. And you know, it's something, and I don't think that European people are not like willing to help. It's something that we don't, or we, we don't believe it's something we need to do on the street. Or maybe we believe it's, or uh, maybe most of the population in Europe believes that it's better not to help someone in the street because he or she will feel as well like embarrassed if someone comes to help him or her. While the, the human network, it's a uh, much more, and we were trying to defend that like, yeah, but here, even a repressed, let's say, a gay or lesbian that it's in the closet still that hasn't out him or herself, maybe would suffer less in Lebanon than in Spain, where he or she has also the obligation to out himself or herself as we are supposed to be already on top of the LGBTQ fight. So everyone should out himself or herself so as not to be a collaboration, collaborationist in the other sense, you know, like again, be like hiding themselves. And again, they were saying, no, you have no idea. And you know, like uh, all those contradictions, all these argument here, maybe, all our um, fight against the contradiction and against stopping thinking when we reach contradiction, it's also a luxury we can have because we have good conditions. You know, they were saying, I will, I will love a French, Spanish, European theory about gender comes here right now, even if it's colonialism. It will improve my, uh, my, my living conditions at once. So I, I think that's useful, you know, and that's as well another, when they're talking about that, we get to found uh, in the recent uh, crisis in Syria, in the fight against the Islamic State, there was a, um, guerrillas in uh, militias in uh, in Rojava state which suddenly became as tequila I don't know if you get to know this new they were defined as the queer uh, unliberation the queer liberation army of Rojava so there were some people getting a gay flag in the middle of Rojava against the ISIS with a uh, written on that these faggots kill fascists so it was like a big uh, shock on the international community. There was even like Ricky Martin uh, retweeting these things, so it became like super famous. And, you know, as she was saying, I would love the cultural uh, colonialism about gender to come right now in Lebanon. There's another step on that. When this uh, guerrilla militias arrive with this idea and they put the flag with uh, these faggots, killed fascists, in Raqqa, in the um, headquarters of the Islamic State. Afterwards, there were some people criticizing them in both, in two different senses that are still quite like to give a thought about that. There were some people in Rojava, the Syrian Democratic Forces, the one that were supposed to be uh, over the umbrella, under with all of these small militias were, uh, they were saying that this was Western colonialism. There was another um, narrative of salvation of the Middle East, as well as the war on terror was a narrative salvation and was a very colonialistic and Islamophobic uh, um, action. And they were saying that the, 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 the language they were using, they were, they were saying, this, the, the thing they were saying that these fascists kill faggots, this like kind of, um, uh, strong use of words what had nothing to do with the population, with the sensitivity of the population in the in the area. 
So that was the part of cultural colonialism. And that's a critic. And also, there was some critic for some Europeans coming back from the fault in Rojava, saying that Rojava queers were not queer enough, which is even more pervert, you know, like uh, yeah, saying that they were not anarchist enough, they were not queer enough, they were not feminist enough, they were not establishing again a hierarchy, a European hierarchy about what is to be a good feminist, what is to be a good uh, LGBTQ defender, or what is it to be a good, uh, yeah, anarchist, which again, make things in, in the right to another. Yeah, I yeah. think this, that idea of like, not being enough of something is just something that comes up all the time in everything. Like the idea that if you fall into any like marginalized group, that you have to be constantly fighting, constantly proving that you're doing everything you possibly can to like exist in that group and progress like the privileges and the opportunities that you have. But I think it's also really important to, I guess to just recognize that a lot of the time just existing and surviving in those spaces is radical enough. So whether you do decide to come out or do these big giant massive things that just by you like taking up space and saying, this is who I am, even if it's quietly to yourself, that that can be just radical and also thinking about the fact that what is the responsibility of art does art have to fix absolutely everything or can it just tackle small manageable things rather than being like we're going to fix colonialism with this one project because that's a lot of pressure to put on anything <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 that's a very interesting thing like i i I don't feel it like, you know, like art has to solve everything, like, or to mend the world, which of course is like, but all, like, like as the, the, as we found contradictions all the time and we cannot stop thinking, I do think that art has to be very strict in the critic it makes on, on itself. You know what I mean? But of course, if we, if we, we um, pretend we can mend the world, we can go, I mean, go to the opposite. You know, and became like a, a fascist because that's again uh, thinking. You if you want to mend the world, you have to think your your thoughts are universal or can be universally good for people, and that's again ethnocentrism, and that's going back to the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what you said it's it's a very good way of going out of this vicious circle. I just wanted to show that I don't know, like that re reason itself, Uras. Mm -hmm inside this this recent circle and i think what you said about just existing in some circumstances can be a very radical way of of resisting which i think is that it's a very good way of escaping this circle i also think in in, in that sense you said about not wanting to mend the world i read once in Holderling, that's a poem from Holderling, but i think it also makes a big, big point on that like he said who uh thinks right now about um, achieving things or succeeding, we should uh, better think about resisting. And that's much more than enough. You know what I mean? Like the idea of resisting is as well as succeed. It's, it's, uh, it's radical enough because the, 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 the I mean, the, 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 the worst point is to lose the resistance, you know, to, to, to give up and, and to go there and then, Go with the flow, <laughs> yeah. But I think it, it's it's a bit. But you said it's a very good point, and it's, a, it's one of these escapes that we want to that we could try. Another escape, I think, which is very important, is not stopping doing things. Because not stopping stopping the movement, because as far as we are trying things and criticizing things, as, as even though. Mistakes are coming, uh, folks go farther. And I think the, in that sense, it's also a good way of scapping that uh, circle. The way of not feeling bad about not finding answers or not, uh, yeah, not, not, not concluding answers or not giving a positive thing, not an alternative. That was but, something. Uh, 
that um, not understand. That was something that um, Amiri Leon mentioned in her artist compass talk about not always not always needing to 100% understand something, just having the discernment to know that you can question it, you can look at it, but you don't always have to know. And I think that's super important within anything. Definitely something I'm trying to like integrate into the whole of my life. So I really like that you said that again. I feel like I needed to hear that again so I could remember. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm also, I think like the, it's great not also like not understanding everything, like not understanding perfectly, but also like feeling, well about not understanding everything and being aware we can like we can love something we don't understand absolutely and that makes us you human you know like in that sense that makes us uh what what we are if we are something what <laughs> if someone knows what we are but in that sense yes yeah yeah it's also good i don't know how the rest of the people see the uh, is it getting too theory, theory too, too, too boring? How do you see the project? We'll have, uh, we'll be fine. We'll give up as artists as we came back from our trip. <laughs> we'll have energy to do other things. What do you think? Um, well, I was just, um, I was just kind of like thinking and I jotted down just off the back of what Jay said, actually, this idea. I guess I just wrote down the phrase like questioning. I first wrote questioning is part of our artistic practice. And then I wrote actually questioning should be um just like thinking about like as an artist as 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 you know people who create or whatever um the whole point i don't know i think part of, of the reason why we make art is to question to ask to challenge even if you don't know so i just yeah so i guess just thinking about how how we live in a world um particularly in in this you know part of the world where the idea of certainty look at what's happening right now that's shaken the foundations of what people thought certainty was right and this idea of the control that we have over everything. And it's really interesting to see, you know, of course it's a terrible time, but I found it quite interesting to see the global dynamics shift and the titans of the West and how they've been extremely unprepared <laughs> um, to deal with this and how the kind of global South in many ways has been able to kind of manage the, the situation for the most part, a lot better, for example, Senegal, right? Um, so yeah. just think about the types of like knowledge, um, that we, you know, that we, we hold on to as, yeah, that we hold on to as kind of like valid knowledge and, and knowledge, sorry. And then, and then this idea of actually, if we move away from the idea of certainty being at the center of things and what happens when um, questions and uncertainty are at the center of things. And I think at least in the kind of artistic space or as a creative, I often think that questions are always at the center and some, and often you don't actually find the answers, but I think, yeah, a lot of people are really scared of, of not knowing i know i'm definitely one of those people ironically i'm always i'm always asking questions because i always want to know what the answers are um <laughs> and, yeah. and i think trying to sit with that uncertainty is an interesting thing um yeah so i kind of just wanted to share that that i'd written that down as a statement that actually it it should be a, a part of if not central to our artistic practice and how we how we create mm -hmm. yeah 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 i absolutely agree yeah I mean, I think that a good question can open much more meaning space than a, than a good answer that it's closing the meaning of space. You know, a good answer just like amputates and makes the, the thing smaller, makes reality smaller, amputates reality. And a good question makes it... Yeah. Well, even as the function of like, because, you know, just even this function of like open versus closed questions, right? Like it's something that you get taught when you're younger and then even when you move in yeah I do like I do a lot of like workshops and stuff some of it around communications and this idea of, of open versus closed questions and how often actually as human beings we are encouraged to ask quite leading questions in order to get people to say what we want them to say basically oh, yeah so it's an art in itself to know what actually is an open question and a question that allows people to yeah to not already have like a seed planted in there and for them to just to, to be able to explore it afresh. So yeah, questions are, as you say, they allow you to be expansive basically, you know, and, and that's why actually so many, you know, governments hate people that question, right? So many governments dislike artists, so many governments dislike people who challenge and, and yeah, question the status quo because you create space for people to see that what exists right now is, is usually not okay. <laughs> <laughs>